Hi. So good to see everybody. But I'm so thrilled that we're having this follow-up meeting. There's other things being planned on September 11th, but I think there's nothing that is um, as meaningful as what you are planning to do. Our Tectonic Leadership Project has been um, invited to Jordan for a conference on conflict transformation. So we are sharing our tectonic process with over 200 students, college students in Jordan. And it's a, an amazing opportunity. King Abdullah is um, very encouraged and very supportive to have his students learn a new way for um, solving conflict within their countries and throughout other countries in, in the Middle East. I think the opportunity of all communities to see a young, passionate group of leaders who are willing to come together and work together in a whole new way. I, I can't think of a more important memorial to uh, the people who lost their lives in September 11th. Are people ready to mingle on September 11th? It is the 10 year anniversary. Um, beyond that, there are other events going on that day, which kind of goes to say that you know, people are holding events and expecting people there for September 11th. So we're not reinventing the wheel, I mean, um, but there are other events going on that day. You're a, you're a whole new group of young leaders with a very important message. a Jewish peace activist. Um, Claude Jacobs and I have been traveling um, very similar paths. I met him at an exhibition of his pluralism project and we've been working together and supporting each other ever since then. How do we build a bridge from the, from the mosque to the synagogue to the church to the to the Gurdwara, to the Hindu temple around Detroit, which, as you say, turns out to be so divided. You know, I've been so honored to have so many different people come to our home. I've had students from all the different countries uh, within the Middle East. And so now when people come to my home, I have everyone uh, sign on the blackboard, and, and usually they write a little something. And so it, it gives me wonderful memories for everyone who has come into my home. And quite often, especially with someone from the Muslim or Arab community, it's the first time they've ever been in a Jewish home. Well, I spent all morning grinding them. Oh, I know, yes. just making home is just so wonderful as always. Mm. Mm. I grew up in New York City, and it wasn't just New York City, but it was in an Italian neighborhood in New York City, an African-American family living in an Italian neighborhood. And so early on in my life, I was aware of difference. I heard Italian, um, the Roman Catholic churches around had all of these various festivals and ferias. And yet we were not Roman Catholics. We were not speaking Italian. Uh, every summer I was going to visit my grandparents who lived in the South. And so there I was spending time with, you know, my cousins riding horses and we were raising chickens. And, and then I would be sent back to the North uh, to live in New York City. Uh, for the rest of the year. And so, again, difference was part of the world that I grew up in. And I came to see that the difference was interesting, uh, that the difference was something that made life exciting, and it wasn't a, th it wasn't a threat to me. I think that part of what, uh, what you have done so well is to 
involve young people. Hi guys. Hello. Oh, more hugs. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi Jerry. How are good you? Oh, how are you doing? Okay, good. Through tectonic leadership, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, um, the University of Michigan Dearborn can be a center stage for you know, using that tension as an opportunity to create positive results in the community. This is, has a great story. This is a nonprofit organization, Arab and Jewish women, who established it to help Arab growers receive um, and, and receive better prices for their olives. So this is a joint project between Jewish and Arab women. At first I was very hesitant. I didn't think it was anything that um, I could partake in because I just have so many strong opinions. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my tolerance level. I, I feel like I'm a different person because of it. I feel like what I have to offer is so much more than I even realized myself. But at the end of the day, even if we agree, it's not even about agreeing to disagree. It's about agreeing to work together to sort out that disagreement. It taught me that you have to reach out. And I know that sounds simple because you're, you grow up thinking, oh, it's important to cross those boundaries, but tectonic leadership kind of taught you how to do that in a way where you don't feel like you're constantly compromising what you believe in. Once you're kind of faced with the issue and once you're pushed to really reach out to the other and to love the other as much as you love yourself, you're capable of being instrumental in conflict resolution, not just here but abroad. It is something that's gonna help, you know, bring peace to the Middle East, but to any sort of conflict. Unfortunately, I think that we have to, of course, deal with war. We have to deal with conflict. Humans oftentimes live inside those boundaries. People always think in terms of, well, we and then the other, they. And we can continue to live within those boundaries. And the conflicts that we have will just then continue. Or what we can do is that we can move towards the edges of those boundaries. And as I'm out towards the periphery of my world, I start to be able to more clearly see other people. I let other people see myself. And then what I want is for those boundaries that start to separate us, not to become walls, but to really become what I like to think of as membranes. And membranes allow things to pass from one side to the other. And it is possible. We can bring peace to our world. One world. It's all we've got. We've got to be strong for each other. And one heart.